It's easy to find ourselves caught up in the whirlwind of motherhood and daily commitments, and that can leave very little time for our goals around writing, much less time for introspection. But if we took a moment to pause and reflect on what it is that we truly desire for ourselves, imagine what could be possible. This week's journal prompt encourages just that. Welcome to Mom Writes First, the podcast that helps busy moms reach their writing goals. I'm Jen Laramore. I'm a mom of five, a lawyer turned life coach, and I'm writing my very first book. I want to help you reach your writing goals too. If you're a mom who wants to jumpstart her journey as a writer, then you have to head over to my website, momfirstcoaching.com, and take the free quiz there. That quiz is going to show you how to take your mom's superpower, you know that characteristic that makes you an absolutely incredible mom to your kids, and then leverage that characteristic so that you can reach your writing goals. Again, the website is momfirstcoaching.com forward slash quiz. Now on to today's episode. Hello, my friends. Welcome. It's Jen. Today, I have a journal prompt to share with you. It is specifically designed to help you to reflect on what it is that you really, truly want most of all this year and how to create it. It's inspired by my birthday. My birthday just happened. I turned 43 years old, and I have to tell you, When I was 23, or even 33, I never, ever could have imagined or pictured my life like this. I am so grateful for this life. I feel so lucky and blessed. I feel like so many of my biggest dreams have come true. And I'm so grateful that I get to be here on this planet with you and have this beautiful, amazing life. Turning 43 is no joke. And seriously, I want you to know, if you have not yet hit your 40s, please know it is absolutely fabulous. It is fabulous. The 40s are fabulous. I love, love, love being in my 40s. My birthday this year was very balanced. It was special. My kids made me a cake. We had delicious Thai food for dinner. And I got really special presents. And I had Overall, just a really fabulous day. As I do, I take the day off of work on my birthday. And so it meant, of course, that I had all these plans for how I wanted to spend the day. Extra time with the people I love the most, plus some definitely needed R&R for me. Rest and relaxation, my friends. So necessary. Well, as it so often does, Mother Nature intervened. And I ended up having the whole day with my kids because it was a snow day. How awesome is that? On my birthday to get a snow day. And it really, truly was a great day. My kids were so excited about it. It was going really well. It was super, super fun until people started throwing up. I am not even kidding. Three of my kids, my three youngest kids, came down with the stomach flu on my birthday. It was something. It was definitely something. Obviously, I wish they would not have had the stomach flu. It was miserable for everybody. But I also had to laugh because the universe seriously has a comedic side. I mean, come on. Stomach flu on my birthday? This balance of fun and mess is really super present in my life right now. And I don't know if it's just this year or if it's always been this way and I'm kind of just noticing it now, but it's definitely there and it definitely is. Very fun one minute and kind of messy the next. And that's just where I am on this little like roller coaster of life right now. A couple of years ago, that might have really freaked me out. At this point, I definitely can accept it. And I know it's just part of the process this year of embodying who I really want to be most as a mom and as a writer. While I was snuggling with my sick kids, I realized just how freaking grateful. I am to be here for this 43rd trip around the sun. I know that I'm lucky to be here. I know I am lucky to have had this life. I've worked for it, for sure. Definitely, I have put in the hours. But 
I am lucky that I've had the opportunities. I've had some people in my life who haven't made it to this year, people who passed away unexpectedly. And I have friends right now who I'm sure are worried about whether they are going to make it to their next birthday or their next five birthdays. As I was reflecting on this and the gratitude that is in my heart for getting to have this experience, this life, I was also thinking about how we really do owe it to ourselves and we owe it to those we love and we owe it to those who don't get the opportunity to be here, to go out into this world and truly live a life that is intentional and joyful and aligned with our biggest biggest dreams. I believe that we are obligated just by being here and by having goals and dreams to take steps to move those goals and dreams forward. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that we all have the same goals or dreams. That's not what I mean. And there's no need to compare our goals and dreams to other people's goals and dreams. We don't need to think, oh, like her goal is to run a marathon. Why don't I want to run a marathon? That's not your goal. That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with her having that goal and you having your goal. We aren't supposed to have the same goals and dreams. We just aren't. But the goals and dreams that we do have, the ones that have been put on our heart, they are there for a reason. And it is our job to make intentional movement towards them. Not movement from a stressed out, anxious perspective, but from a determined, resolute, and joyful, freaking joyful perspective. Because truly, it is a gift to have these goals and dreams and the opportunity to pursue them. And it's with that mindset that I bring you this journal prompt for this week. Are you ready? Here we go. Picture this. It is your next birthday. As you blow out the candles, you take a moment and you feel your heart Just expand with gratitude and joy because your life is all that you hoped it would be. Tell me what it looks like. What does your life look like as you blow out those candles? Think about what is the same as it is right now and also think about what changes have been made. What dreams did you chase over the course of this year? This is about choosing on purpose the kind of life you want to create. These questions may seem very big and esoteric and daunting at first, but they hold the key to unlocking your biggest aspirations and igniting the path forward. So grab your favorite journal, find a cozy corner, and let's dive into this transformative exercise together. Here are some further prompts to guide your reflection. Number one. Reflect on your current life. Take stock of what you have. What aspects of your life bring you the most joy? And what areas might you want to change? Number two, envision your ideal future. Imagine what it would be like if you could literally just go to a mall and pick out everything that you wanted in your life. So you could go to the writing store and Pick out being a published writer. You could go to the quality time with family store and pick out game nights and puzzle nights and hikes and whatever else it is that you and your family love to do together. Go to the work store and pick out meaningful work that works for you and for your family and your community. Go to the pet store and pick out more trips to the dog park and more fun snuggling on the couch with your best buddy. What if it was really just as simple as adding those things to your cart? Close your eyes and consider what you would put in your cart. What's there? What do you see? Get as specific as you can from your personal relationships to your writing aspirations. Number three, identify areas for growth. What changes would you actually need to make in your life to bring that future version of your life into existence? Are there habits that you need to cultivate? Do you have to move past fear? Are there boundaries that you need to set and maintain? What needs to happen? 
Number four, identify the actions that you need to take. What do you need to do each day in order to reach your goals for your next birthday? If it's a writing goal, for example, how often do you need to write? How do you need to make space for writing in your life right now? And what else would you need to do in order to protect that time and energy so that you can write? For me, I know that I need to stretch, nourish my body, and rest every single day. Otherwise, I can't write. So I know that in order to be that future writer that I want to be at my next birthday, I need to take actions right now that are going to take care of my body, nourish my body, and give my body rest every single day. And number five, finally, cultivate joy and gratitude. Take a moment as you're journaling to really appreciate all that you have. Consider how you will add even more joy and gratitude to the journey that lies ahead. Find the joy on the journey. That's what you have to do here. I believe that we're here to create, but to do so in a way that is fun and playful and joyful. We should never stop playing, no matter how old we get. What would your life look like at your next birthday if you chose this year to play more, if you chose to cultivate gratitude and joy? My friends, this, for me, is about embodying who I really truly want to be and doing so from a place that is joyful and connected and thankful to be a human on this planet right now. As I record this podcast, I want you to know that your story is not confined to what you have already written in your life. Your story also includes those pages that are left to write. And that extends to every aspect of our lives. Embrace this journal prompt. Give it a try. Allow yourself to craft a narrative of growth, resilience, fulfillment, and fun this year. Before we wrap up, I want to leave you with a final thought. Your goals and your dreams are valid. Your voice is powerful. And your stories matter. So let's continue to write on the page and in our lives. I hope you love this journaling prompt. Make sure you share it with a friend who could also find it beneficial. It's up to us to empower each other on this journey. Hey, it's Jen here. Listen, if this podcast resonates with you, then would you please do me a favor? Number one, Share it with somebody else. It's up to each of us to empower each other on this journey. And that's one of the values that I am trying really hard to live into as part of this podcast. So please, if this podcast resonates with you, share it with a friend who it might help to. Number two, it would mean so much to me if you would leave me a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, because that will help other people find this show too. Third and finally, I want to invite you to get signed up for my absolutely free newsletter. It's not spam. It's not salesy. I just want to support you in your writing goals. Head over to momfirstcoaching.com and you'll find a link there where you can easily sign up. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. In case nobody has told you today, you are a beautiful, resourceful, whole, creative human being. You are not broken. You are an incredible writer. Keep on writing. I will see you next time.